Sounds good in here too. Yeah. All right, hey everybody, uh, welcome to the YouTube channel. Uh, this is, I guess, part 1.5 of the crankshaft install. Uh, on the first part video, I installed the crankshaft and also showed how I installed the ARP bolts, specifically the main bolts, also the MRP main caps, and also checking the, the main bearing clearances. So you can see part one to see that video, but I, I kind of forgot to check or to show y'all how to check for a uh, thrush clearance. Um, you definitely, I would recommend on you checking on it. Uh, you can have the machine shop do it too for you. I did have the machine shop check for the clearances uh, for my motor so I can rebuild it. Um, but I just wanna show you how you can do it too and double check too. Uh, the reason why you want to check the clearances is because you don't wanna just slap parts all together and call it a day. You gotta make sure that everything's still within spec even after a rebuild, even if you're using new new parts, you still wanna make sure everything's still within the proper tolerances. So uh, I'm gonna show you all how to check the basically the forward and backward movements of the crank. So let me go ahead and adjust my uh, camera here so y'all can get like a really good view here. All right, there we go. Looking pretty good there, let it focus there better. Okay, sweet. So. Yeah, this is my setup here. I have this magnetic base. Um, you can get it cheap on Amazon. Uh, it turns on and off to be magnetized or demagnetized. And then I set it up like this to where the dial bore gauge is touching the uh, front part of the crank. And um, basically you wanna dial out this to zero. So what you're gonna do is push this crank forward. And once you move it forward, the needle's gonna move and you wanna adjust this dial gauge to where the zero hits the, or lines with the needle while the crank is moved forward, which I will do now for you. Um, I already zeroed it out, but this is how you would do it. You just kind of move, put the flathead here, and then move the crank in the forward position. So you're putting pressure here, basically, and move it forward. And then the needle's gonna move, and then wherever it moves, you want to adjust this dial to where the zero mark hits or aligns with the needle, basically. So that means you zeroed out your gauge. Now you're gonna measure the difference between the front motion to the backwards motion here. So I'm gonna go over here and go here to this other side of the cap and go backwards here. So that's what I'm gonna do here now. And it moved here to 0 0.08 millimeters here. So that's good. And I can spin the crank here too, just to double check, see if there's any differences here too. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this forward here again here. All right, so it's zeroed out. And I'm gonna move it backwards here too so I can see the difference between the cranks. And it's 0 0.08 millimeter here too. So I'm gonna show the, uh, kind of show how it goes with the dial gauge here too so you guys can kind of see clearly what the dial gauge is doing too so you guys can kind of see, um, you know, what it does so you guys can you know, get a better idea of what's going on there here. So let me just focus this guy on here first, see if it focuses better. Okay, so it's good focus. All right, so I'm gonna move the crank um, forward now. And you're gonna see it move forward here. So I'm gonna move this forward here. All right. So you see it's dialed at zero. So it's zeroed out. And then I'm gonna move this backwards so you can see the difference between the cranks here. So it's 0 0.08 millimeters. Each small increment is considered 0 0.01. So yeah, um, that's not too bad. It's still within spec. And I did rotate it 180 degrees here. So yeah, um, that's how you would do uh, the checking the thrust clearance of the crank. Um, these tools technically are cheap. Um, I don't know I have like a branded uh, dial bore gauge. It's really nice, but and I'm borrowing it from my friend But I also have the cheap Amazon version too and There's no difference in measurements. It's they're both pretty accurate uh, What matters the most is how you properly use the measuring tools if you improperly use the measuring tools No matter how expensive and fancy the tool is it's going to be useless to you so just keep aware of that and um, it's not too hard to do to check this clearance, um, but you definitely, I recommend at least you should check it just because 
The reason why is because the crank moves forward and backwards during acceleration and decel. And checking the thrust clearance basically measures that and it makes sure that, that you're still within spec. Uh, if it's too tight or too loose, you're gonna run into issues later on when you're actually driving the car. So that's not a good thing. And on the Toyota factory manual, it's 0 0.02 millimeters to 0.2 millimeter uh, allowance for the thrust clearance. So I'm 0 0.07. That's really good, I'm within spec, um, and that's a good sign already. And you do this before installing the pistons too. So uh, part two will be my piston install, and I'll make a video of that too also. Uh, so yeah, hopefully you guys will join me on this journey um, and this rebuild, and hopefully y'all learned something today uh, with this video. All right, I'll see you out there, bye.